Hello everybody, Black and Mr. Shantis. We are special live Tijuana, Mexico. And who else to be DW Mexico? Conan. Right. I'm kinda hot that we're not in a hot tub. Ah. Uh, we'll, we'll, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we're, we'll rain check on that. Yeah, rain okay. check. All right. We're backstage. What a great trash show, man. Tons of surprises. Ray Mr. Jordan Lola Brilli on El Zorro. Talk about the show, man. How how it went. Yeah, great show, man. It was fun and you know the we had Flamita against uh, Septimo Dragon, which I thought was a great match. And then we had that dream match, Ricochet, Ray Oros, Daga, and uh, Phoenix. And just by looking at the card, you know those are four of the best guys in the world. You yeah. know? So you knew that was going to be great, and it was, because they uh, showered him with money, which is yeah, yeah. a Mexican tradition. Then there's uh, the underneath match was really good, too. The one with that had um, uh, Arcangel Divino. Mm, amazing challenge, man. Good. Yeah, he is amazing. I, I've been saying that he's the next star in Tijuana. And, uh, you know, his brother, Ultimo Maldito, they actually started wrestling on the streets awesome. for money. Yeah. So, like, when you would stop at a red light, they'd oh. be under doing wrestling moves oh, really yeah. cool for, like, 10 years. So it's a really cool story. And then we had a surprise appearance by Ray Mister. Oh. The place came on blue. Oh, oh, man, amazing. It was, it, was a good, it was a good night. Definitely. And sold out. Boom. Definitely. Yeah. And when Daga joined, we blow blown really on. I think his stock now rises. What do you think the him joining means for his career? Yeah, um, it does rise because, um, you know, Daga, like a lot of wrestlers, were lost in the shuffle in AAA uh, due to, you know, basically ineptness and favoritism and just people not knowing what the fuck they're doing. Yeah. And so how do you not have Daga, uh, you know, feature more prominently you have Helico or Jack or Phoenix? And yeah. Like, it was such a waste of fucking time. And then him and LU, just like he was there and gone and Lucha Underground, which I thought yeah. was a really big waste. Yeah, yeah. But um, uh, all I can say is that I'm, I'm, I'm really happy because we're, we're going to have a, a YouTube show starting in March. Oh, nice. So everybody nice. can see our show and we're going to have some really cool production. And, uh, you know, then next month the Young Bucks come in and we're going to do some stuff with TNA. TNA oh, yeah. Crash. You saw like Bar 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 like having like we had Eli Drake on the show tonight, yeah. Jeff Jarrett. Yeah. How a relationship with TNA also at PCW? How our relationship you're important to, for growing grass, all these relationships? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's definitely important because uh, I don't understand how in any way it benefits you not to work with another promotion. And I just think for so long there's been this narrow minded uh, myopic view of like, okay, I have my promotion, you have your promotion, those are your guys, they're my, we don't, we're not going to work together, yeah. and don't really understand how that makes you any money, so the more people that you can work with, the more alliances you have, yeah. I think the business is going to thrive. Here's the uh, 20 bucks I have, 20. Uh, <laughs> Jerry Boras. Jeremy Boras made a guest appearance. Yeah. Guest appearance, man, Jerry Boras. <laughs> TNA's finding One of the most underrated interviewers, I think, in the business right there, Jerry Boras. Yes, and the genius behind... One of the geniuses behind all that Hardy stuff, which is so awesome. How was it, man? You, you, you were on Impact, you and Ruben were, and how was that segment? How did it come about? The yeah. Hardys being in Tijuana. Yeah, well, you know, as they're defending their championship all around the world, and yeah. how they can teleport and back <laughs> and come to right and all that. And that's so when somebody, when they, they tell you, do you want to work with us in something that cool? Of course you want to. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, they, we booked them, they came down, and we did it. And I love Jeff and Mac because they're super cool guys. and. They're giving now. They're giving him the chance to be creative. Yeah. Um, you know all this creative freedom, which now maybe the booking committee will see that wrestlers can also be creative and maybe let them book their own shit. Yeah, they're, they're not the crash style. What does it mean the crash for them to be the tag team champions? Yeah. Manja, what does that mean? The crash. Oh no, it just gets our it gets our name out there. You know, because they're such a they have so many followers and you know they're so great on social media. It gets our name out there and it makes us cool because we're doing something with a cool. Um, you know what I'm saying? Definitely. Cool concept. I feel like every month, like, Crash is the most talked about thing after the show. Yeah. Definitely, the, the, the comparisons the Mets to PDVG are uh, legit. Like, there's a good comparison. The Mets to PDVG, you think that's what it, it is? Uh, I don't know. I think it's a Mexican PWG, but I just think it, it's a... Uh, just... I'm just trying to give the fans what they want. You know? Oh, yeah. And, and that's all I'm trying to do. Uh, and because... Uh, Every big promotion I've worked for ever always thinks they're smarter than the fans. And it's like, bro, it's, it's as easy as just listening to them. And, and since I'm a fan myself, yeah. like, you know, I booked this whole show, so I already knew 
All the matches are going to be great. Yeah, probably. The, the, of course, the main event was going to be what it was. Yeah. You know? And that Jeff Jarrett's match was going to be the show, you know? Not not great wrestling, but that's where you go to the show. You the, know? Inter- the sports entertainment yeah, value, which people yeah. come to see. Right, right. And so, and I know, I know they're going to like it, and they did. You know, you were out there. Definitely came all the way, LA, me and my friend John. Yeah. So the word, uh, how, how much is the, you're here, you got to talk about the history of this building, man. Yeah. Talk about history, man. Just like the building. history really quick that I, I debuted here, oh, Ray Mysterio man. debuted here, Psychosis debuted here, Damien debuted here, Halloween <laughs> debuted here. You know, this is where the, where the very first time, because as you can tell, hardcore wrestling is still over. Oh, in yeah. Mexico, the very first time there was ever a hardcore match in Mexico was in this building because we had just come back from ECW. Oh. We had marked out for that style. We brought it here and we were selling this bitch yeah. out. I mean, consistently. Yeah, and so a lot of people come from here and uh, Rey Mysterio Sr. who designed my mask and Rey Mysterio Jr.'s mask, Super Astros from here, um, Extreme Tigers from here, Venom is from here, um, now Rey Oros. You know, it's got a hell of a tradition. How do you think, like, Lucha Underground exposed people to luchadors in the U.S.? I, how, how do you think, like, are you happy that Lucha's taken off now in America with Pentagon and FedEx? Now look a little really on. Yeah, because I'll tell you a story. When I first went to uh, WWE, like, maybe in 1990, Vince never, ever spoke to me about, bro, you're Latino, and let me use you for the Latino demographic. He was like... You know, wanted to do the Max Moon character. Oh, yeah. Where now any Latino, they're, they're, everybody's dying to have a Latino superstar. You know what I'm saying? And now I don't have to explain what Lucha Libre is anymore. Now everybody knows what it is, and that's cool because when I wrestled in Canada for Stampede Wrestling, I'm going to say maybe 1990, so we're really going way back. And there was nobody that knew how to. Now imagine that. Back then, nobody knew how to wrestle Lucha except Owen Hart, but Owen Hart was overseas or some shit when I got there. And then fast forward 2016 or 15, and Teddy Hart had a show there, and I went there, and when I came out, everybody started to chant, Lucha, yeah. Lucha, and uh, I was like, wow, man, everybody knows what Lucha Libre is now, which is cool. You think Lucha Libre got helped that? Like, they exposed people. Yeah. That those first two years really, yeah. did that really helped expose like people to these, like, I didn't know who Phoenix was or Pentagon, but once Lucha Libre came on, I started noticing the guys, that's how I went to Mexico and found all of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, Lucha Underground has been an incredible platform for Lucha, and uh, it's just a, it's just a real cool, different, creative, original style. And you see now, WWE has the 205, which a lot of it is Lucha influenced. Yeah. You know, in NXT. Yeah. You know, I mean, Lucha has really influenced wrestling in a big way, as you know. And Pentagon Fitness a main event in Chicago. Yeah. But like Chicago, Illinois. That's yeah. like Lucha now, AEW, yeah. using FanX, using Pentagon. Right. It's so cool to see other promotions like capitalizing on Lucha, AIW, yeah. a lot of guys. And there's so many wrestlers that really have been, well, now Ring of Honor is using Dragon Lee. He oh, yeah. Great. Dragon Lee, Kam- Kamtachi, those two. Yeah. Dragon Lee, probably the best wrestler. Yeah, and yeah. Bolador is great, and he hasn't been here. Rush is great. And he, I mean, there's a lot of great talent everywhere because it's easier to get into the business now. So there's more people in it, and there's just a lot of talent out there. So it's what? a great time to be like even on the independent. Why do you think CML guys haven't got as popular as the, like, the triple, R, triple R guys? Because they haven't been on a, a platform like Lucha Underground. They're on just Ring of Honor, which is a lot smaller. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then they're also part of New Japan with the Fantastic Manias and all that. Yeah, they go over in Yeah, last week I'm going to talk top actions over yeah. there. Man. Yeah. How do you think, like, the scene now, and like, your San Diego's your home, man? How, how, what do you think about the scene now, San Diego, blowing up? We have three, two shows tonight in San Diego, man. Oh, really? Yeah, we have two shows, Bob Stars running, OWA running. What do you think all these promotions starting That's now? That's incredible, bro. <laughs> like I said, the indie scene is really strong because I lived in San Diego <laughs> off and on for, like, 20 years, and I would say for, like, the last, for the first 15, uh, 14 years, I'd never seen a wrestling promotion in San Diego that was successful, or, you know, they'd do one show and then they'd stop. Then my boy, Ruben Police Scanner Zamora, who's right here, you can scan over there. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, so he was doing some shows in a place here called Imperial Beach, and he was drawing good too, but he wasn't um, consistent. You know, and then like Gus, who's over here. Yeah, Gus, FCW, right here, man. What's up? Crash, all about Crash tonight, though, baby. But he, was a, he was the first guy I ever saw that was really had a really good show, 
you know, and uh, and had a really good crowd, and I was like, wow, maybe this guy has something here, and he's been doing really good, you know, on, on his own level, and uh, I'm proud of him, and I'm glad that there's two or three promotions. Man, I love wrestling, this is my life, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, when I tell people they're marks, I'm a mark too. <coughs> I love, you have to be, I love this business. Then let's plug your stuff, Keaton 100, yeah. plug, like, where can we find yeah. the, the podcast and all your merch or whatever we can plug? Have you heard that podcast? I hear it once in a while, man. I'm not a big podcast guy, but definitely I will try to listen to it. Yeah. Uh, so it's on podcast1.com and it's called Keeping It 100 and I'm on there usually my co-host is Disco Inferno and um, also uh, we have Ruben to Guerrero has a segment every week which is hilarious. Tom, what you, Helms has a segment on every week. Um, we usually have a segment with uh, Kevin Kleinrock uh, from Mass Republic and uh, he's got a little feud going on with Disco Inferno <laughs> um, and then we have we go on other shows and start feuds like Vince Russo show. We had a feud with Jeff Lane. Disco also has a feud on killing the town with Cyrus and Lance Storm. <laughs> Don't give and, it up with um, that. And, and we talk politics. We talk wrestling. We yeah. talk sports. We it's just like a whole bunch of. I, I listen to you and Eric Bischoff talk politics. I'll yeah, yeah, yeah. That. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got keeping it one hundred. That's that. And then I got another one in Spanish called Podcast Boom. You can go to my Facebook. Conan, K O N N A N 5150, or my Twitter, and uh, and of course Crash Promotion. We come back uh, next month. March 25th. And, yeah, March 25th. We're going to be doing something with TNA, and uh, and the Young Bucks are going to be here. And he also announced Lashley. Those two days, man. Yeah. We're definitely going to drop Lashley's people. going to be here, yep. And um, so, you know, we're just trying to give the people what they want, and we're, we want to be the number one promotion in Mexico and we're on our way. Definitely have another show, what is it? Uh, with Mysterio Pentagon, another show outside of Tijuana. Yeah. What show is that? Yeah, we have one in Aguas Calientes, which is uh, March 9th. March 9th, then uh, we're going to be going to Mexico uh, in April, and then we're going to be in Monterey April 9th to crash as a promotion. So we're not in Tijuana anymore. You're going to tour now. That's I mean, not, I've heard 30 to 40 shows a year, is that yeah. true? You're yeah. trying to... I would think right now, um, I would have to say, yeah, maybe 30 shows. That's not bad, bro. We're just starting out, and you know, we're starting to get some international TV deals, and we're gonna grow. We're, we're, we're growing. You know, we're in a growing stage right now. Now, just you know, we just gotta keep giving out a good product, and word of mouth is gonna help us reach the next level. As always, I wanna see matches. Whenever I hear a crash, I always wanna see matches. I had to come down soon. Okay. Okay. Next time, tell me, you know what, I gave you my, uh, I think I gave you my wrong email. No, wrong email, okay. I'm going to give it to you, so next time you come, I'll hook you up. Definitely, man. Yeah. But thanks for being on the show. I right, appreciate it, man. You. I love you, bro, because you're a super fan. Thank you, man. And I've seen you in San Diego, I've seen you in PWG, I've seen you in Lucha. You know, you're all over the place. It's the Penguin! Yeah. The Penguin! The Penguin! The Penguin! The Penguin! The Conan, this is awesome. I to put him over because he went dressed up as a penguin for all And I interviewed Chavo Guerrero as a penguin, yeah. man. <laughs> 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 Jeremy Borash makes another cameo. Yeah, man. Thanks for being on the show. Have a great day. Thank you, bro. Okay.